<clears throat> Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Otto Pensler, and uh, we're going to have a little talk about collecting uh, today um, in my at the mysterious bookshop in Manhattan. This is my office, and uh, our author today is a good friend and one of the most accomplished writers um, still working today, Lawrence Block. Larry is a grandmaster um, of the Mystery Writers of America. He's won four Edgars and uh, has a range of writing that I don't think anybody that I've ever known or read has had this, a, a similar range from dark, uh, noir books to comedy to uh, uh, strange uh, humor and uh, and and just odd, you know. It's not all odd, but 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 that is a part of what he does. Um, he started his career in the late nineteen fifties, and he was writing, uh, trying to earn a living. Let's call it erotica. Um, it was largely soft core porn, frequently uh, lesbianism, which in the 50s was kind of shocking to the average reader. He wrote under many different names. Uh, the one that he's been uh, most, uh, most commonly uh, reprinting uh, is Jill Emerson. Uh, they were all paperback originals. He got paid a small amount, uh, and uh, he was producing them at the rate of one every couple of weeks. Uh, Donald Westlake was doing the same thing, by the way, uh, and they were friends early in their careers and even collaborated on a, on a few books uh, and published under, I think the house name was Sheldon Lord, uh, but there was also Alan Marshall, which was also a house name, uh, but Jill Emerson was only Larry's. Uh, they were all paperback originals, and uh, they've recently been reprinted uh, in either Hard Case Crime has done them as, uh, as paperbacks again, but sometimes they've been done by limited edition publishing companies. Here's Threesome, which was done into a, uh, a limited edition. Um, I don't remember how many copies but uh, this is 1999. This was 300 copies signed by the author and the illustrator. Um, now, I, I should say that one thing that's a little bit unusual about uh, my ability to sell Lawrence Block books is I have them. I have a lot of them. A few years ago, uh, Larry decided that he didn't want to have all of his duplicates. You know, when you're a writer, you, the publisher sends you 10 copies or 20 copies, whatever it is, um, and, uh, and Larry kept them. He saved them. Uh, in some cases, the, the, the books were remaindered, a small quantity, 300, 400, 500, and he, he bought those and uh, had somebody on, on staff selling the books on his, uh, on his website. Well, he was tired of doing that, so I bought them all. The Mysterious Bookshop has them all. So uh, we, what you just saw, the camera, our, our producer and director and, and filmographer uh, uh, showing you a, a little shelf of books is nothing. We have a floor to ceiling bookshelves on the other side of the door, as well as cartons of books. Uh, probably, I think I probably bought a, somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,000 volumes of Lawrence Block books. Uh, the deal was that he had to sign them all. <laughs> and it was almost a deal breaker for him because it, it took him weeks to sign all these books. But we, as a result, we have several thousand autographed Lawrence Block first editions. Now, the, uh, most of his early books were paperback originals. Uh, not just the softcore porn or what he calls mid-century erotica, uh, but even 
his great character, and I think he's one of the great characters in hard-boiled fiction, is uh, Matt Scudder. Uh, Matt Scudder was a former New York City pol policeman who accidentally, uh, who was an alcoholic, and accidentally killed a little girl, and has then spent his the rest of his life atoning for it. Uh, he's not officially a private eye, but he acts like a private eye in that he helps people. <clears throat> um, and there, there's a series, the, the series is, is more than 20 books. I think it's 21, might be 22. Um, the first three were uh, paperback originals, as I said. And then, uh, but, The Sins of the Fathers, this is a hardcover copy. It's the first, uh, the first book, but this is the British first edition published by Robert Hale. This is one of the three that were, that were done as a paperback original. And this is the first British edition, but also the first hardcover edition, and very rare. It was published by a small company called Robert Hale, which mainly, not that small, but what they did, the kind of company that it is, almost exclusively publishes books for libraries in England. And they generally had a print run of a thousand copies, almost every one of which went into libraries. Uh, and libraries, of course, destroy books. You know, they stamp them and they paste uh, things in them and they put labels on them and all of that. And then they're read to death and eventually pulped. Um, one of the few copies that escaped all of that was Larry's own copies. Um, so that is an extremely rare book. And it's probably the rarest book of all of those that I have. It's uh, $650, and most of his books um, are not anywhere near that price. When, in America, when he finally came into uh, hardcover with his, it was his fourth book, which is A Stab in the Dark. And uh, for those of you who have been tuning in previously, you know that... Um, uh, William Morrow uh, is easy to tell. Uh, Arbor House became part of that company, and this was published by Arbor House. And you can always tell an Arbor House book because it has the run of numbers that goes down to one if it's the first edition. Um, so this was his first Scudder in hardcover. His second hardcover is this famous, a very famous book. Uh, this was his fifth book, all told. And um, the reason it's famous, it was filmed. Uh, again, Arbor House, there's the autograph. And again, the number sequence goes down to number one. I do, I could have brought a second printing here, but I, I forgot. Uh, and it just lacks the number one. It's identical in every other way, but that number one is just scraped off. Uh, this, and this was filmed, Eight Million Ways to Die. The reason it's called Eight Million Ways to Die is because it's set in New York, which had a, New York City had a population of eight million. So naturally, it was moved to Los Angeles in the wisdom of Hollywood. Um, and it was not the best uh, book, best movie ever made. Uh, one of my favorite series, Matt Scudder. But he also then, and they're dark, you know, they're dark books, there's some violence, uh, some people getting beat up on a pretty regular basis, and there's always a death. Uh, but he started another character, another series character, named Bertie Rodenbar. Um, and this is the third book in the Bernie Rodenbar series. And uh, instead of putting Bernie Rodenbar as the, uh, as the name for the book, is the burglar, because Bernie is a burglar. He's a crook. And by, by this book, burglar who liked to quote Kipling, if memory serves, he now is also a bookseller. It happened pretty early. He, bought, he has a bookshop, and he steals. He's, um, there's, they're nonviolent books. They're, they're charming, they're light, and they're, they're great fun. And you see the thought process of how he plans his burglary, and then he goes in, and inevitably things go wrong, of course. 
Uh, but it's a, it's a wonderful series that, I, that I'm very fond of also. The burglar who liked to quote Kipling, the burglar who studied Spinoza, the burglar who uh, uh, painted like Mond Mondrian. Um, it's a long series with the burglar in the title. And those never came out as paperback originals. Those were always in hardcover from Random House. Another one of his characters, uh, talk about weird ideas. You know, Larry is the king of weird ideas. So he has a character named Tanner. Tanner had a war wound in the Korean War. And as a result, he can't sleep. He's awake 24 hours a day, every day. Evan Tanner. And they came out as paperback originals. And that's not one of them. That's that's a that's a non-series book. That's just a standalone book. I had them in the in the pile with the other Tanners, which are um, mostly they have tan, Tanner in the title, but not always. Two for Tanner, Tanner's Tiger. Uh, my favorite title. The canceled check. <laughs> there, there. He he works as an espionage agent, um, but they're they're funny. They're they're humorous, and um, I just showed you. Uh, the, well, here's they've been paperback originals. I started reprinting. This is a reprint that I did uh, in the Armchair Detective Library, uh, and you don't have to look about trying to figure out first editions. There were never second printings of Armchair Detective Library books. Uh, which were done in several formats, uh, including limited editions like this in a slipcase, limited to 100 copies, numbered and signed. And mostly those were the first hardcover editions. This is one of 100 and signed, and it's $75. At which point I actually should say this. I, I don't think I've ever said it in all the times I've been doing this. We frequently get... Uh, people writing to us, emailing us, or calling and saying, are, are those books for sale? It's a bookshop. Yes, they're for sale. <laughs> we welcome you calling or writing and ordering books or asking about these books. Um, a character that I came to love, and I've talked to uh, Larry about this, is Martin Ehrengraf. Martin Ehrengraf is a lawyer, um, the most unscrupulous lawyer that you could possibly imagine. And since he's a lawyer, that, that's saying something because we all know about lawyers. Uh, this is a limited edition. Aaron Graff is the character and he will do anything to get his client off. And he always succeeds. In, I think it's the first story, but in an early story, he says, the only way you're going to get off, you have to kill this person. And advises him to kill him. And in another story, he says, don't worry, I'll take care of it. And suddenly, people start showing up dead. Unusual character. But, and, but and only in short stories. There is no Aaron Graff novels. It's just the two volumes of short stories. Um, partly because, as Larry said, it's hard to come up with these plots. You know, it's, it's a challenge, even for Larry, uh, who has written way over a hundred books, uh, both series as well as standalones and some things that are nonfiction. Uh, another character that became quite popular, uh, they all have hit in the title, hit parade uh, and, and so on, is Keller, who is a professional hitman. Uh, mostly kills people who deserve to be killed, but not, not always. And you'd never really know. Uh, but the Keller series is great. They're all, uh, many of them are sold as novels. They're really several novellas combined into a novel. They're episodic novels, but they're really essentially short stories. And sometimes the short stories appeared separately and then were incorporated into a book. Um, this is Morrow, a William Morrow book, as we discussed before. You can always tell in the later years, that's uh, 
early when he was when William Morrow was publishing Earl Stanley Gardner in the Perry Mason series, they did not use this uh, this this number line, uh, which only became part of publishing uh, in the seventies. I think uh, before that, uh, nobody had done that, so you wouldn't see that. Morrow in those days would simply say second printing if it was. If there was nothing, you knew it was a first. <clears throat> but the later books, uh, all of the books that, Lar that Larry wrote for Morrow, all have that number sequence. Um, a couple of books that we published in the bookshop. Um, this is a book called Afterthoughts. This is the only way it appeared in, in, uh, in printed form. And, what it, and it's just an utterly fascinating book because he writes about his books or he writes about his characters uh, or short story collections and so on. And you, and you get a great insight into what he was thinking when he did those books. And they're, it's truly a fascinating collection of short stories. It's called Afterthoughts. And um, we did a very small, because it wasn't fiction, uh, we did a fairly small number. I think we did 200 copies of this, uh, which are $30 and they're all, they're all signed. But in addition, we did some very fancy books. This is called The Night and the Music. And you can see it's, it's beautiful leather binding, marbled boards. These were limited to 100 numbered copies at $150 each uh, and 26 lettered copies, which are $275 each. It's for serious collectors, and um, I, I love this particular book. Here's one of the lettered copies. As you can see, only 26 copies. This is copy N, all signed. And um, this is a collection of, at this time, all of the Matt Scudder short stories. The Night and the Music. Isn't that a great title? We also did, because I'm such a big Scudder fan, here is his trade edition of a Matt Scudder novel called A Drop of the Hard Stuff. Before this came out, however, we did an edition of 100 copies. The, uh, the numbered copies have blue marble boards with blue leather spine, 100 copies numbered and signed. The lettered copies were done with red marble boards and red leather spine. And this is, that's the limitation page for that book. Uh, for weird things, as I told you, he's, he writes all over the place. You never know what to expect. Um, here's a comic novel called Ronald Rabbit is a Dirty Old Man. Hilarious. And here's the author reading to his children back in the day. This is a very scarce book. The, uh, the publisher was an unusual publisher named Bernard Geis, who published all kinds of, uh, of books, uh, signed, signed by Larry. And you can tell a Bernard Geis book because it says first printing, which takes all the suspense out of whether it's a first edition or not. Uh, it's a very scarce book. It was done in a very small quantity because it wasn't really a mystery and didn't have any of his series characters. And so the publisher didn't know quite to make what to make of it. And so they published it in a small edition. Many years later, it was reissued by ASAP Press. And here's <laughs> Lawrence Block as Ronald Rabbit. And there's a different photo of him in this limited, very limited edition. But when you're trying to earn a living as a writer, you write whatever, wherever you can get a job, here's a book that you didn't know that he wrote. I can guarantee it. Pseudonymously, it was a book about collecting coins. 
Larry was not a coin collector. He was a stamp collector. But he got the chance to write this book, and he did. And finally, I'm going to show you, there's a bibliography of all of his works up to when this book was written. There were a lot of things after this, but it is a complete bibliography of his short stories, his novels, uh, and everything that he wrote. And uh, we have some of those for sale too, all signed by Larry on, on the cover. Lawrence Block, folks.